Hello, children. I hope you had a lovely day. I'm going to read you a bedtime story now from the Winnie the Pooh stories. And it's called Winnie the Pooh and some bees. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, Winnie the Pooh lived in a forest all by himself. One day when he was out walking, he came to an open place in the middle of the forest. And in the middle of this place was a large oak tree. And from the top of the tree, there came a loud buzzing noise. Winnie the Pooh sat down at the foot of the tree, put his head between his paws and began to think. First of all, he said to himself, that buzzing noise means something. You don't get a buzzing noise like that, just buzzing and buzzing without it meaning something. If there's a buzzing noise, somebody's making a buzzing noise. And the only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know is because you're a bee. Then he thought another long time and said, and the only reason for the bee. And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is making honey. And then he got up and said, and the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. So he began to climb the tree. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed and as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. It went like this. Isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder why he does. Then he climbed a little further and a little further and then just a little further. And by that time, he had thought of another song. It's a very funny thought that if bears were bees, they'd build their nests at the bottom of trees. And that being so, if the bees were bears, we shouldn't have to climb all these stairs. He was getting rather tired by this time, so that is why he sang a complaining song. He was nearly there now, and if he just stood on that branch, <gasps> crack! Oh, help, said Pooh, as he dropped ten feet onto the branch below him. If only I hadn't, he said, as he bounced twenty feet onto the next branch. You see what I meant to do, he explained, as he turned head over heels and crashed onto another branch thirty feet below. What I meant to do, of course, it was rather, he admitted as he slithered very quickly through the next six branches. It all comes, I suppose, he decided as he said goodbye to the last branch, spun around three times and flew gracefully into a gorse bush. It all comes of liking honey so much. Oh, help. He crawled out of the gorse bush, brushed the prickles from his nose and began to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. And you see a picture of him coming out of the gorse bush, looking rather sad for himself. Must have been a little bit sore, all those prickles. So, Winnie the Pooh went round to his friend Christopher Robin, who lived behind a green door in another part of the forest. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he said. Good morning, Winnie the Pooh, said you. And there's Christopher Robin's little house. Can you see that? I wonder if you've got such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? Yes. I just said to myself, come along. I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. I just said it to myself, thinking of balloons and wondering, what do you want a balloon for? Winnie the Pooh looked round to see that nobody was listening, but his paw to his mouth and said in a deep whisper, Honey, but you don't get honey with balloons. I do, said Pooh. Well, it just happened that I had been to a party the day before at the house of your friend Piglet, and you had balloons at the party. You had had a great big green balloon, and one of Rabbit's relations had had a big blue balloon, and had left it behind. And being really too young to go to a party at all, and so you had brought the green one and the blue one home with you. Which one would you like, you asked Pooh. He put his head between his paws and thought very carefully. It's like this, he said. When you go after honey with a balloon, the great thing is not to let the bees know you're coming. Now, if you have a green balloon, they might think you were only part of the tree and not notice you. And if you have a blue balloon, they may think you were only part of the sky and not notice you. And the question is, which is most likely? Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon? They might, or they might not, said Winnie the Pooh. You never can tell with bees. He thought for a moment and said, 
I shall try to look like a small black cloud. That will deceive them. Then you had better have the blue balloon. And so it was decided. Well, we both went down with the blue balloon and took your gun with you just in case, as you always did. This is Christopher Robin did that. And Winnie the Pooh went to a very muddy place that he knew of. And he rolled and he rolled until he was black all over. A little bit like Jenkins, my dog here. Can you see him? Can you see him, Winnie the Pooh, rolling in the mud? He's going to be very black, isn't he? And muddy. He was black all over. And then when the balloon was blown up as big as big, and Pooh and Christopher Robin were both holding onto the string, Christopher Robin let go suddenly, and Pooh Bear floated gracefully up into the sky and stood there level with the top of the tree and about 20 feet away from it. The bees were still buzzing. Oops, I've missed a page, sorry. Hooray, you shouted. Isn't that fine, shouted Winnie the Pooh down to you. What do you look like? You look like a bear holding onto a balloon. Not, not like a small black cloud in a sky. Not very much. Oh well, perhaps from up here it looks different. And as I say, you never can tell with bees. So there was no wind to blow nearer to Winnie the Pooh nearer to the tree. So there he stayed. He could see the honey. He could smell the honey. But he couldn't quite reach the honey. Can you see him floating in the air with his blue balloon? <laughs> there was no wind. Uh, after a little while, he called down to you. Christopher Robin, he said in a loud whisper. Hello. I think the bees suspect something. What sort of thing? I don't know. Perhaps they think that you are after their honey. It may be that. You never can tell with bees. And there was another little silence. And then he called down again. Christopher Robin? Yes. Have you an umbrella in your house? Mm, I think so. I wish you would bring it out here and walk up and down with it and look up at me every now and then and say, looks like rain. I think if you did that, it would help deceive the bees. Well, silly old bear. You didn't say it out loud because you were so fond of him and you went home for your umbrella. This is Christopher Robin talking. Oh, there you are, called down Winnie the Pooh as soon as you got back to the tree. I was beginning to get anxious. I have discovered that the bees are now definitely suspicious. That means they know there's something going on. Shall I put my umbrella up? said Christopher Robin. Yes, but wait a moment. We must be practical, said Winnie the Pooh. The important bee to deceive is the queen bee. Can you see which is the queen bee from down there? No. A pity. Well, now, if you walk up and down with your umbrella, saying, it looks like rain, I shall do what I can by singing a little cloud song, such as a cloud might sing. So, while you walk up and down and wonder if it would rain, Winnie the Pooh sings a song. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. Every little cloud always sings aloud. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. It makes him very proud to be a little cloud. The bees were still buzzing as suspiciously as ever. Some of them indeed left their nests and flew all around the cloud as it began the second verse of this song. Remember the cloud is Winnie the Pooh. And one bee sat down on the nose of the cloud. Whose nose is that? Winnie the Pooh's. And then got up again. Christopher, ow, Robin called out the cloud. Yes, I've just been thinking and I have come to a very important decision. These are the wrong sort of bees. Are they? Quite the wrong sort. So I think they should. we should make the wrong sort of honey, shouldn't you? <gasps> would they make the wrong sort of honey? Yes, they would. I think, they, I think I shall come down. How? asked Christopher Robin. Winnie the Pooh hadn't thought about this. If he let go of the string, he would fall. Bump! And he didn't like the idea of that. So he thought for a long time. And then he said, Christopher Robin, you must shoot the balloon with your gun. Have you got your gun? Of course I have. But I have to do it. If I have to do that, it will spoil the balloon, you know. But if you don't, said Pooh, I shall have to let go. 
and that would spoil me. When he put it like this, Christopher Robin saw how it was, and he aimed very carefully at the balloon and fired. Help! said Pooh. Did I miss? You didn't miss, said Pooh, but you missed the balloon. Oh, I'm so sorry. And again, Christopher Robin fired, and this time he hit the balloon, and the air came slowly out, and Winnie the Pooh floated down to the ground. Here he is. Can you see? But his arms were so stiff from holding on to the string of the balloon all that time that they strayed straight up in the air for more than a week. And whenever a fly came and settled on his nose, he had to blow it off. And I think, but I'm not sure, that that is why he's always called Pooh. Pooh. Is that the end of the story? asked Christopher Robin. That's the end of that one. There are others. And Piglet and Rabbit and all of you, don't you remember? I do remember. And then, when I try to remember, I forget. That day, when Pooh and Piglet tried to catch the heifer-lump. They didn't catch it, did they? No. Pooh couldn't, couldn't, because he hasn't any brain. Did Christopher Robin catch it? Well, that comes into the story. I do remember, said Christopher Robin. Only Pooh doesn't very well, so that's why he likes having it told to him again. Because then it's a real story and not just a remembering. Christopher Robin gave a deep sigh, picked up his bear up by the leg and walked off to the door, trailing Pooh behind him. At the door he turned and said, I'm going to have a bath. He nodded and went out. And in the moment I heard Winnie the Pooh bump, 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 going back up the stairs. hope you enjoyed that. Jenkins is fast asleep. Can you see little Jenkins here? Fast asleep. You like stories, don't you, Jenkins? I hope you all sleep well tonight and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another story. Perhaps another one about the crazy bear, Winnie the Pooh. Night, night.